Hey everyone, um, Brother Astle here. I wanted to take a little bit of time and record um, some little demos for you that have to do with uh, uh, some things in particular. So for this one, I wanted to talk a little bit about brush economy. What that means is just making marks and leaving them uh, and then moving on. What this will do for your direct painting, it will make you more efficient uh, and it will allow you to move uh, a little bit quicker through the painting. So, in this painting, um, I just wanted to quickly just demonstrate that. Uh, and in, in, in terms of my approach, I'm using a, a line and mass block in. So, I'm just using my line drawing at the beginning, just like anything. Um, and then I'm going to start in with some definite shapes uh, pretty quickly. Um, I. Like last week, we started talking about using an anchor point and setting your uh, standards. In this case, I decided to use the eye socket um, as my standard for value, drawing, um, and it starts to help in terms of color. It's a really easy color to get. Um, the placement is going to be very important, so I figured I might as well start in with that shape. From there, as we start working on brush economy, I'm going to try to visit each area once uh, before returning and adjusting any nuance in color um, or value. So this painting actually goes pretty quickly. Um, it took about 45 minutes, something like that, um, to go beginning to end. Um, I would have taken longer on it, but I just want to talk. I just wanted it mainly to be about. Um, brush economy. I actually recorded myself doing this same painting, not, um, I mean, I painted the same reference two other times, but for some reason I don't really understand how to edit videos so well. Um, I'm, I'm really new to it, so uh, the other files were way too big and my computer couldn't quite handle them. So anyway, now we're, we're stuck with this one. Uh, so I was a little frustrated with having to paint it uh, a third time and so maybe that's why I kind of rushed through it. But what we're starting to see here um, is I'm trying just to nail the color. Um, I'm looking at a photo but um, really all I'm trying to do is make sure that the relationship I'm getting between my color is uh, close to where I want it to be in the end. If I can, I'll try to leave as much of my initial uh, judgments and steps in place uh, in the final painting. Now you can see uh, it doesn't really look like a final painting because um, it's really blocky and the edges are all way too hard. Um, and so I would follow the same approach, meaning I would be very direct and still paint this. This is just one approach, but uh, in order to get to the finished painting, it just, I'll have to come back and revisit the areas and um, get a little more specific with my shapes and with my colors and especially my edges. So uh, for this one, we're just uh, flowing right through the painting, trying to get a sense or um, of what the head looks like in terms of value and color with okay drawing. In this one, I made a lot of drawing errors. Um, but again, I, I'm not wasting a ton of time trying just to nail down um, the drawing. It's This is really much more about just showing you how to apply the paint and just kind of work through it in a really direct manner. This is this is probably, this is more of the approach I would follow if I had a really good photograph and I had a model and I didn't have a ton of time um, to get color notes. Uh, I would follow this really direct sort of painting uh, approach and that way uh, I, I get what I need down fast and I don't worry about um, unessential information uh, or information that I can get better uh, with you know a photograph or something like that so um, moving pretty quickly uh, through here and you can see I'm already getting a, a, a pretty good sense of the head and the color this might at this stage it would be pretty much all I would really need to go home and kind of do a finished painting uh, from a photograph. The The funny thing is I am doing it from a photograph, but a lot of times, uh, I mean, I've done this so many times that I can kind of pick up on 
uh, from what a photograph gives me in terms of the color information that I need. Um, but yeah, the color is not um, where it needs to be in a photograph. So I'm sort of um, interpreting a little loosely some of the color, but that's okay. And now what you'll see is once I get a general sense of everything in there, um, I'm going back and I'm adjusting value and color. Um, just trying to get it a little more accurate and starting to try to turn form just a little bit more. So I'm having a little fun just adding a little saturation, uh, a little chromatic edge um, in some places. Uh, what you'll notice as well is I I haven't switched my brush yet. Um, I've been using the same brush throughout the whole painting. Um, and that is not necessarily the best practice, but for these quick studies, I like to just move uh, pretty quickly. And this Master's Choice brush, it's um, halfway in between um, a really soft, um, like, mon like it is a mongoose brush, but for some reason it feels a little bit stiffer. Uh, and I like it um, for uh, throughout the entire painting. It's... It can really apply the paint. So what you'll notice in that is as I'm laying down these strokes, I am not um, messing with them. So I lay them down and leave them. And then if I need to adjust anything, I use a new stroke of color and lay it down. Um, this isn't by any means the best process of, of painting, but for a quick study, it really is quite nice to uh, just not worry so much about edge or any sort of nuance until uh, the very end, or even at all. I can worry about that stuff at home, in the studio, uh, with a photograph, and just kind of move through it. So you can see I'm, I'm laying it down pretty, um, pretty thickly, um, and that gives me some pretty good color saturation, and it gives me some, uh, you know, some real clarity, or I would call it like... Um, what is it called? Bravura. Uh, it's just sort of a confidence that comes through in the stroke. I like to have strokes like this in my uh, gallery style painting, uh, you know, a little bit more serious painting. Uh, but if I do it everywhere, it feels a little too heavy handed. Um, and so it does take some refinement. So you'll find uh, if I do the same stroke everywhere, it will become a little repetitive and it's, you know, repetition uh, can be uh, a little boring at times, so trying to find variety in your brushwork. So, um, so next week we'll be using sort of this approach, or trying to use this approach, as well as a, a shape block in. Um, and so in this one, I started with line and mass, uh, sort of line and mass. Uh, but next time we'll really be using a mass block in. So I'll be trying to record another video. Uh, for you before then, uh, so that you don't we don't have to waste time uh, watching me paint. Uh, in this one, it's a it's a short painting. It's only forty five minutes, but I sped it up, and so it's only a ten minute uh, video. Um, but you can see everything you need to uh, you need to see in that. So you can thank me later. <laughs> So a lot of this, I, I could have already stopped uh, at this point, but some little things that I'm doing is just adjusting the drawing, uh, adjusting a few edges. If this were a serious painting, I would need to spend um, quite a bit more time um, trying to refine and being very specific about my edges and color. Um, also, you can see, like, I knew that I had some drawing errors, um, but because it was so quick and I want to keep these videos short, I just sort of bypassed the drawing um, without worrying about it too much. So I'm just quickly going through and just trying to show you uh, brush economy. So. You can see in and around that ear, I try to paint with as uh, few strokes as I can um, I've heard of people that even count their strokes, you know, and say they can do a, a painting in uh, so few strokes. And I think it's an interesting idea, trying to be efficient and still trying to get as um, much information. But I, I don't, I, I rarely ever think of trying to paint that way. Um, I'm, I'm really just trying to get the information I need and just trying to put it down 
uh, not necessarily as quickly, but as simply as I can, um, and then working to complexity if I need it. So um, that's something that we'll play around with um, going forward in the class. Just a, la a few last-minute strokes. Sorry about the glare as well. I'm trying to re uh, figure out how to record this without getting so much glare. Um, I think if I can turn it or change my studio lights, um, that's the disadvantage of recording for the first time. I didn't quite understand uh, the pitfalls, but I'll try better next time, and uh, I will see you in the class on uh, Tuesday.